So, um, <coughs> the subject of this talk is, um, is uh, uh, not directly uh, related to random matrices. I will, I will spend some time defining uh, the setup of it. Um, <coughs> so, the model I'm going to talk about is uh, called the random walk and random environment. Um, I will, I will uh, let me spend a little bit of time def defining it. So this is a stochastic process um, which uh, corresponds um, to the movement of a particle on the hypercubic lattice. Well, it could, could be some other graph, but I, I, will, I will talk about, um, um, I will focus on this graph on the hypercubic lattice. And the particle um, has jumps, um, for the sake of um, this talk, uh, the jumps will be always uh, uh, to nearest to neighbors. So, um, the possible jumps will always uh, will always be some some unit vector in um, in the lattice. So this is the the L one norm, uh, and um, now the 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 the, um, the jumps of the random of this uh, process of this random walk are uh, itself random. So um, this means that the jump probabilities will be random. Um, and they will correspond to choosing at each side some set of numbers. Um, so these, these numbers are the probabilities to jump in a given direction uh, indexed by, by the, the, the jumps. So they have to be positive. So otherwise, it will not be a probability. They have to sum up to one. Um, and, um, and this is what, what, what will define the, what I'm calling an environment in, this in, the, in the title. Um, so actually, I will, I will define what, what, what I will call the environmental space. This is a, um, it's just a, it just, it just means a, Setting at each side some, uh, or pre prescribing at, at each side um, some some jump probability, uh, which I am uh, um, um, defining um, as this uh, Cartesian, Cartesian product here, um, and what will we call the environment is um, is just uh, choosing, as I said these um, probabilities. So at each site, um, I have to make a choice. So this will be some element of the environmental space. And so the omegas are a, a set of, uh, of numbers. Which um, are in this uh, class of uh, numbers which sum up to one and, and which are positive. So you, you can, okay, I'll, I'll, these, these are uh, definitions which, uh, in a sense, it's much easier to understand them making a picture here. So, so what I just said in all this uh, in all these definitions is, is that if I have a if I have a site x, let's say on the on the lattice, um, and I want to know what's the probability that the random walk will jump from site x to x uh, plus e, this uh, will be given by by the environment that I choose, and will will be given by the number omega x e. That's what I'm what I'm saying. So actually. The, the random walk itself will be defined by its uh, transition probabilities. Um, so for example, I, 
I will fix the starting, this is, the, this is going to be the starting point and the environment. And the random walk um, will, will have a, a certain probability of jumping from a site uh, Y, let's say, to at, at, at time N to a site Y plus E, uh, which is just given by, by the environment. Um, so this is for all uh, points on the lattice. So as you can see, it's, uh, uh, the process I'm looking at the, in this talk will be discrete time. It's not crucial. But, uh, and the, the, the process is uh, uh, starting always um, from uh, site X in this case. <clears throat> so, well, this is a um, this is a Markovian process. If you fix the environment, at least, um, but uh, uh, what what we, we, we I want to do now is I want to uh, put a, some randomness on this uh, uh, environment, so. Um, that, uh, uh, of course, is just um, given by, will, will, be, will be modeled by putting some probability measure, defining a probability measure in the environment. So I will call it P. The double bar here means that uh, I will distinguish uh, the, the probability measure on the environment, which is going to be written by a double bar, I say a P with a double bar, sorry, from the, the law of the random walk itself. So, and um, um, so there, 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 there are usually two ways. Um, of um, looking at the random walk. So one is, uh, the first one is what, what's usually called the quenched, um, let's say quenched point of view, which means that, um, that uh, the environment is frozen. So the law of this uh, random walk, uh, I already introduced it, is, is going to be called, I, I will call it uh, P with a subscript uh, uh, X standing for the starting point and omega for the environment. So, um, but there's another point of view which is the, uh, it's called usually the averaged, sometimes annealed. Um, which means that somehow I want to study the movement of the random walk, um, but averaging what, what, what's going on with, with respect to the environment. So I'm just essentially taking an average here over the environment of the law. Both uh, um, the, the behavior of the random walk under under both measures is is, is not uh, necessarily the same actually, um, uh, and and actually the 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 second um, the average law uh, uh, has the disadvantage that the random walk uh, is not Markovian under under it. So. Okay, um, so there, there, there is a behavior which is going to be important.
important uh, to distinguish uh, throughout this talk, um, and maybe I will, I will make some assumptions right now. So the first one is that <clears throat> I will assume that the choice of the jump uh, probabilities is IID. under the law. And the second one is that I, 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 will, I will suppose that, that all of these probabilities are, are larger than some constant. So I cannot have any uh, jump probability which is equal to zero. Um, so I, w I, I need to uh, introduce a, a, a behavior which will be relevant in uh, my discussion, which is uh, what's called the ballistic, ballistic behavior of the random walk. So I'm going to introduce a, a direction. The idea is that I have some direction here. And uh, there is a, a possible behavior here on the walk which is called a tran a transient uh, or transience in direction L, which means that <coughs> the random walk somehow wanders uh, away to infinity in direction L. So this, this point here is, is just the inner product or, or the projection of the position there on the walk in direction L. So in, 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 in the picture, it would mean that the the walk may move backwards somehow, but at some point, it will end up going to infinity. It could oscillate, but it, <coughs> its projection in this direction will go to infinity. And the other behavior which will be relevant is uh, what I already said is uh, ballistic in direction L. So this means that um, the transient behavior occurs uh, with a given speed. So this is a much, much stronger statement than transients or transients, uh, directional transients, let's say. So, um, well, there, there's an open question which I'm not going to discuss in, in this talk, I'm, I'll, I'll just say it, which is that it, <coughs> it's believed that, or many people believe that in di dimensions larger than, than, than one, uh, any walk which is transient in a given direction is necessarily ballistic. So that, that, that's uh, still open. Um, I mean, I, I'm, okay, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't bet on, uh, on it actually, but. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in, in scaling uh, limits of the Rondo walk uh, in this talk now. So uh, I need to go uh, on to large deviations. Um, so it took a while uh, for people to understand uh, or, or uh, to prove, let's say, a large deviation principle for the random walk and random environment. In dimension one, in dimension one it was proven in the 90s, uh, but in, uh, at least in dimensions, in, in any, for any dimension, um, it was uh, only in 2004 that it was proven by, by Varadhan. Um, 
Well, he proved two, two things. Uh, uh, first, he proved that if, um, if the law uh, of the, well, I, I said that I was going to assume that the law is IAD, but uh, this is the only exception in, in, in this point, that, uh, that I'm going to say something for a law which is not IAD necessarily. <clears throat> so if P is um, stationary and ergodic, Um, then, uh, uh, so Varadhan proved that a quenched uh, large deviation principle is satisfied. So I, I don't have time, I'm not going to uh, define what a large deviation principle is. I, I think everybody knows, should know or knows. But let, let me just say that in, in particular, in, uh, one, can, one, one can show a uh, that um, this is not completely trivial, uh, the corollary, that if I look at the probability, at the quench probability that the random walk um, is at a, a position xn which, um, so, which uh, asymptotically uh, um, converges to a, po to a point when you normalize it, because the range uh, of the random walk at time n uh, is, a, an, a, is a L1 bo uh, a, a ball of uh, an L1 norm of uh, radius n. So if you look at if if, if you look at, at at this quantity, this converges actually to. Um, the rate function at x. So this is a rate. This is a what's called the quenched rate function. It's not random. So it. And. Um, he also was able to prove a, an averaged large, large deviation principle. So analogous, uh, in, a, in an analogy with uh, the limit I just um, wrote, uh, one can show that uh, uh, his uh, Averaged large deviation principle implies now that if you look at the same expression but under the average law, this converges to minus another um, number, which depends on x, on x uh, another function, let's say, which is uh, the averaged rate function. So both, both, both of these rate functions are um, not, not too much is known about them, very, very little. Um, uh, I, well, let me say some of the things. So this is a very... Uh, Basic property. So, turns out that these functions are finite. This, this is very simple to, if and only if uh, um, you look at points. Um, on RD, which uh, as I said already, which have um, a L1 norm smaller than uh, equal to one, the same is true for the quenched. So this this set D will be important in the rest of the talk. Um, Can imagine it as a. I mean, it is 
a diamond, since, okay, or a square, a square which is rotated. And now, um, in general, these rate functions are not equal. The annealed and the quenched rate functions are not equal in general. But uh, um, for, example, for example, in dimension one, they are, they are in dimension two, it's known that they are different. But there's a result of a 2010 of Yilmaz um, he, he was a student of, of Aran who proved that um, um, there is a, if, if the random walk is ballistic, so this is what I already discussed at the beginning. Well, he assumes something, uh, not, not exactly ballisticity, but then um, there is um, an open set in D. Um, where the rate functions coincide. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not giving you all the information of this set. Let me give a little bit more in this picture. The, the set, um, the set D, uh, the, the open set, which is in here inside, is, um, is a set which um, contains um, an important point, which is the velocity. When the random walk is, is ballistic, the velocity is not zero. And this open set, you can imagine it, it's something like that. It's the only thing which is known. But uh, he has to assume this very, uh, somehow, I, I would say it's an annoying uh, thing, which is ballisticity. Uh, I, I don't have time to explain why, but it, it's just uh, uh, somehow ballisticity uh, gives a structure of the uh, law of the random walk, the annealed law, uh, uh, which is uh, w where you can you can <coughs> see some IAD structure of the, of the random walk. Um, and the other, th there's another um, result of 2008. Uh, this is not published, but uh, in, was also a student of Ravara, and I'm, I'm not even going to state it. I'm just going to say that he gives a variational formula. Or the quench rate function, and it is very non non um, explicit. So it's a, somehow an abstract variational formula, which uh, I would say has not been uh, very useful. Uh, conceptually, it is uh, interesting, uh, but uh, it, has, it has not been so useful to, to make computations in the sense of the of these rate functions. Uh, so uh, somehow the a big problem is how if, if, if somebody could uh, compute or give some formula for this, uh, nice formula for these race functions. <coughs> okay, so the, um, so recently with, um, uh, with the other people, so uh, Rodrigo Basáez and, and uh, Chiranjeev uh, Mukherjee, And Sagliati, um, we, we were able to um, uh, in a sense get rid of this assumption. Uh, but there, there is a cost which is very natural and somehow gives the right, uh, I would say, uh, a setting for the quality of the rate functions, which is low disorder. Um, and I, I forgot to say the result of, of, of gene mass is uh, valid only in dimension large, larger than or equal to four, otherwise it's not true. So here's all, all, you, will also, you also need dimension larger than or equal to four and a uh, low disorder. So I, I, I will define it uh, right now. So there, there is a, you, you can define for, given a measure, uh, a law of the environment P, you can define um, it's disorder uh, measured as um, 
the maximal distance between the random probabilities at a, at a given site with uh, their averages. So this, this Q is the average of omega. So this uh, number, this epsilon, is measuring how far uh, the, 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 maxim, the, the, the maximal uh, distance that you can have between the randomness uh, omega and the Q. So the theorem says that uh, there is a, for, for any compact set, so, um, which is in the boundary of uh, this diamond. So I'm looking at the boundary now, only now. There is an epsilon in an, an epsilon uh, which depends on, on the compact set such that um, if um, the, the disorder of the environment is smaller than this epsilon, um, the rate functions agree. Um, on the compact set. Um, so it, it, the, the, the first important uh, um, um, point of the theorem is that uh, it gives the equality of the rate function without the assumption of elasticity. If for the moment, uh, uh, the result is only on the boundary. In, in the interior, it is work in progress. Um, and um, as a corollary, the, you, you, can, you have a, a, an explicit rate, a, an explicit, sorry, formula for, the, uh, for the both rate functions. Uh, so this is a, a because the annealed rate function at the boundary is, uh, can be computed uh, immediately. So uh, you get a formula for, a formula for the a uh, quenched one, um, and I have to say, well, that the, the trans the, there is really a phase transition here. Uh, it, it is possible to show, and I'm not going to say the, the, whole, the, the full, uh, all the details of the theorem, that uh, in general, uh, if epsilon is large enough, uh, these rate functions are not going to be equal. Um, okay, now, um, the, the proof, uh, I, I, I don't, I want to, I mean, that's not the only thing I want to say in this talk, so I, I don't have too much time. I just want to say uh, about the proof that uh, um, um, one uh, uh, observation that is important about the proof is that um, there is a martingale um, which plays a uh, a role here, which is uh, what I'm writing over here. And um, if uh, you're able to get a good estimate on, on, on a norm uh, of, 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 on the L2 norm of this martingale, um, it, it, is, it is possible to show that um, that actually the margin, the, the, this, this, this thing is converging to zero, and this will give you the equality of the Laplace transforms of uh, the, um, the random walk, and then you, use a, 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 you, you, you can use a, a very well-known theorem of uh, Gartner and Ellis to get the, the equality of the rate functions. Okay, so now let me... Um, go on to what I wanted to say about what happens in dimension two. Um, so in dimension two, you, can, you, you cannot expe expect a, a result like this where, where you have equality of the rate functions, even if the disorder is, 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 is low. But, but uh, actually, um, 
it's, it is possible to find out. Uh, this is, I want to talk, uh, make a connection with, uh, here with uh, um, what's called the KPZ universality class. Uh, I'm, okay, the, the, this this um, this is um, a um, somehow a picture of a universal behavior describing the movement of interfaces, two-dimensional interfaces, which separate a stable face by, from an unstable one. Um, so it turns out that. The random walk um, is uh, in this class also. I want to. I'm not going to convince you because I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to have time to, to give you the proof, but at least give, give you the statement. Um, so we'll have. I, I will have to be a, a little bit more uh, precise about the disorder. This, this uh, uh, rises, I mean, th th this, this connection arises when one looks at the random walk at low disorder again. But uh, um, we will look uh, at environments which are um, um, of this kind. So, so the disorder ap appears in a particular way. Um, there is a parameter epsilon, and um, these uh, size are IAD again. So you have a set of uh, laws which are which are which uh, are joint. They have a joint distribution given by the size, and they are par parameterized by epsilon. Um, but for the effect of, of the scaling, I will do. I'll, I'll put a square root of, of epsilon here. Uh, it's just a convention. No, it's not a. Um, so um, okay, I will make a scaling. Um, Uh, yes, I didn't say this. Uh, the, the, these uh, size are also uh, bounded by one. Otherwise, uh, <coughs> okay. So we will make a a a, a scaling um, uh, which is not so uh, simple to define. Um, so first. Uh, I will define. I will, I will. I will choose some some point on the on the space where the rate functions are finite. Um, please, I think I still have eighty minutes, or or nine, maybe nine. I don't know. Um, so let, let's make a picture here. I have the. Um, I think I'm not on the blind spot, I hope. So I will choose some, some point here, as I said. Um, now, the second ingredient I need is uh, I, will, I will have to um, define some curves, which have a, uh, well, this, uh, this equation is, uh, is uh, I don't I don't know if it um, it's somehow it, this is an equation which interpolates between the equation of a circle and the equation of a square. <coughs> so for for small um, if 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 you rotate the coordinates, uh, this uh, corresponds, as I said, uh, for, uh, uh, to the equation of a square for the constant uh, large constants. So for for small values of the constant, this is very close to a circle, but as you uh, increase the value of the constant, you begin to, 
to look more, more like, like a square. So here even it's like this, and, and in the limit it will really be the square. <coughs> so these, these are these, these curves. Uh, um, Uh, constant. So now um, I will choose, maybe, maybe for the sake of the explanation, I need to choose this point somewhere else uh, like that, let's say W. I will choose a, a, um, the unit tangent of um, the point I'm, I'm pointing at, uh, uh, which is a um, uh, tangent in, in, in W uh, passing through the curve. So this is unit tangent. So what I what I I'm going to do now is is a scaling in where um, time, the time of the random walk is going to scale like uh, well diffusively in a sense uh, like uh, epsilon square, but space will have two uh, way, two coordinates of scaling. One is the omega, the omega one, the W one, sorry. The W one is going to scale like time. So in a sense, <coughs> this is, uh, W is going to be, play the role of time. And the orthogonal one uh, will scale like, like its square root. And, um, and well, of, of course, noise, uh, as I define the model, uh, is uh, scaling like the square root. Um, so now I think I, yeah, uh, uh, let me say the theorem. Uh, um, <clears throat> so this is a, a joint work with um, with, uh, well, Jeremy Quastel. Um, so the, um, the theorem says the following. It says that, um, in, well, in dimension two, um, um, there is a, um, There is a, well, there, there are some functions which I'm going to call the first one alpha sub epsilon. Uh, alpha sub epsilon is, is something that will depend um, on, the, on the point which I chose here on, on a time. I, I have to fix time. I have to fix uh, uh, space. Uh, uh, this, is, this x is one dimensional. Um, there's another scaling, uh, normal, uh, well, you say normalizing uh, uh, function. Which also will depend on the, on the, on the three, three quantities, and uh, also <coughs> a couple of constants. These ones depend only on on the direction I choose. So, what's going on is that <coughs> if you look at the Transition probability, it's the same transition probability I was looking at before, the quenched one, sorry. The probability that you run the walk at time n is, <coughs> let's, sorry, I, I should write here, at time t over epsilon square. I'm not uh, in saying, of course, uh, you have to take the integer part, otherwise this is not defined. I'm looking at discrete uh, time. Um, so you re, as I said there, you rescale re uh, one um, um, direction of space like time. But the other, so this is a vector, remember, the other direction, like the square root. Um, and, um, and the result is that this converges to, um, oh, well, and you have to center by this uh, lambda, this converges in distribution to a, well, a function which is stochastic, it is a stochastic uh, function which is the solution of the stochastic heat equation. In so where, as he said, uh, okay, let me write it, 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 it. This is the solution of the stochastic um, 
heat equation, um, there is uh, the, the gamma here, u, and, and then you have here, uh, well, maybe I should write it like that, uh, space-time white noise. So why uh, I said that this uh, gives a connection with the KPC equation, because uh, the, the, the KPC equation the, is um, the helpful call transformer of the solution of the stochastic heat equations in a sense, uh, this is giving the, the relationship. I want, to, I want to point out that <coughs> the result is, um, um, it, it's, it, what's relevant about, uh, actually, the theorem I didn't say, it, 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 is that the, um, it is a result about essentially a model which is a polymer which is not directed. And uh, most of uh, the, oh, well, I think all of the uh, results giving the scaling to this uh, stochastic heat equation were uh, under the assumption that you have some di di directed model. Um, and um, maybe I should just say very briefly that uh, there is, um, I, didn't, I, I, I'm, I didn't speak about this today, but there is, <coughs> Is there a work in progress? Is, is a work in progress with uh, um, my friend uh, Jose Ramirez? He's not Alejandro Ramirez, <laughs> uh, where we we can uh, apparently there, uh, uh, for a certain choice of the law of the random walk and random environment, uh, you 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 can find determinantal formulas. It has to do with the talk that uh, the first class. I'm not going to say more about that. Okay, thank you.